My name is Nelda and I am from the Philippines. I met my scammer on Facebook in a group called World Singles. I was hoping to find a guy from the States. It's always been my dream to meet a good man, good job, who'd be serious about marriage and family. My country is very poor and I've always had a dream of meeting the perfect man from America, making him the man of my dreams. I met Charles in this group. I had posted a photo of myself along with my age and my location stating that I was looking for love. He replied to my photo stating that I was beautiful and he would like to get to know me more better. He sent me a friend request and we started chatting on Messenger. He said he worked for the United Nations and was doing peacekeeping in Sudan. But he said that he was originally from Texas and that he had a home in Houston. He said he was a single father and his wife had died from breast cancer 10 years ago. He said his son was now 12 years old. I have a son from my previous marriage who is 11 years old that I'm raising by myself. Charles said he hadn't dated anybody since his wife had passed away and now that his son was a bit older he was hoping to find somebody to spend the rest of his life with that he said he was also on a contract and he would return home to Texas in about three months. He said that where he was peacekeeping it was very dangerous and his son was staying in a boarding school outside of Houston and when he returned home it would be just him and his son and he'd hope to find the love of his life so that he could share and start a family together. We were both like-minded people wanting the same things. He asked me for my phone number and asked if I had WhatsApp and I told him I did and we exchanged numbers and he added me on WhatsApp. His phone number was from Houston so I had no reason to think he wasn't real. He asked me for photos of myself I sent a couple of them via WhatsApp, but then he asked me for more. He said he wanted more and more and more photos. It felt kind of strange. He kept asking for more. I sent 15 of myself, and he sent back two of himself. I tried to video call him, and he said it's forbidden because he's in a war zone, and it could risk his security if he turned his camera on. But he did ask me to make a video of myself, and I took a video of myself in my home, saying my name and where I was from. He would text back and forth on WhatsApp and I tried calling a few times but he wouldn't even pick up my voice call. He said he couldn't call while he was in the war zone. Finally, one morning he did call. But he sounded a little strange. I could hardly understand what he was saying. And I've talked to several Americans before on social media. I have friends that are in America and they didn't sound anything like him. When I asked him about his voice and his accent, he told me that his father was originally from Russia and his mother from Norway, and that he had grown up in Germany, so he had a slight German accent. Well, now I grew suspicious. I don't know if it's just angels watching out for me or what, but when I went to school, one of my teachers was from Germany, so I knew this German accent. This was not German. I told him, and he said I was crazy. And of course he said it's German. So then I asked him to say something to me in German. And he said no, it would upset him because it reminded him of his past. I kept trying to video chat him, even when he said he was off duty. But he would still not pick up my video call. And I told him if he can't video chat, then he needs to make a video for me just like I made for him, stating my name and waving hello to the camera. He got mad and he said he shouldn't have to prove his love and I told him you made me do it, it's only fair. Finally after some time he sent a video of a man that looked like he was in the army camp or shooting a gun. It was very blurry and fast and all I could hear was the man speaking and then I heard my name being said. But it didn't go with the video and I recognized that and I showed my sister this man and told her what was happening. We looked into it and I had my suspicions that it was a scammer. I had my sister listen to Charles and I had a voice chat conversation with him on WhatsApp and she immediately told me no, stop talking to him, it's a scammer. I decided to keep chatting to him though just to see what he would say. He kept saying he couldn't wait to be with me, he wants to marry me, start a family and blend our family together. He said that his son and my son will get along great and that I would love his son just like his own mother did before she passed. I told him, I don't even know his son yet. I'm not ready to be his mother. 
I have no place in his life right now. I have not even met you in person. He then asked me if I'd like for him to fly to my country and meet me. I told him, sure, let me know when you're in the Philippines. You can fly into Manila and I'll come pick you up. I'll arrange for a taxi. He told me that his contract wouldn't be over now for some time, but before he told me it would be about three months. He had to extend it, and he said it could be almost a year. Well, I told him, I don't want to date someone online for a whole year. So he told me he could break his contract. I told him, well then go ahead and break it, and let's meet and see if this relationship will work. I figured I was calling him out on his lies, but he agreed and said that he would meet me. He would be there in one week's time. I was surprised because in my heart and my mind, I knew he probably wasn't real. And finally, the day before he was set to come to Manila, he gave me a flight number. And I checked the number online, and it matched the flight that was coming in. The numbers matched. So I was a little suspicious. Maybe he is real. But I have my doubts. He told me he was getting ready to go through airport security. And I told him to message me when he landed, and I would send for a taxi. Well, I didn't hear from him for two days. And then I kind of figured that's where it would end because he had no way to show up and he wasn't real. I received a message on WhatsApp from someone I didn't know with a Florida phone number. They said it was a security department at the Miami airport and Charles had been arrested because he didn't claim some goods that he had in his luggage. The man that called had a similar accent to Charles. And I told him, well, that's not my problem. And he said the gifts that were in his luggage were for me and that I can get in trouble because Charles didn't declare them on his tax form when he went through airport security. I told the man I didn't ask for any gifts. I don't want them. It's not my problem. They told me that Charles had been thrown in the airport jail and I needed to pay $3,000 US dollars to pay the tax on the gifts because the gifts are in my name and it was my name on the gift tags, so I'm responsible. I told them to throw the gifts in the trash or sell them and use the money to pay the fine. But I was not going to pay anything. The man on the phone said he was airport security and he became very angry, demanding I pay or they would come to the Philippines and arrest me. I told them to come. They can leave Charles in jail. They became mad and hung up on me. I tried to call and message Charles, but nothing went through. It was a scam at this point. The man from the security at the airport called me back, telling me I can either pay $3,000 in cash or make payments in $500 increments using iTunes gift cards. I told him I wasn't going to pay any gift cards or any money. The man insisted that they were going to start throwing Charles in prison forever. Never let him out. I told him, go ahead. He, as an American, can call the president and get him out. I finally hung up and blocked both numbers of this so-called airport security man and Charles. My sister told me this would happen, and they would probably ask for gift cards, money, or my bank info. Yes, I wasted a little bit of time with Charles, but I didn't fall for the game. All ladies in the Philippines need to be careful. When you're looking for a great man, remember we don't have to pay for love, and we certainly don't have to use gift cards. Thanks for your time and letting me tell my encounter. Ladies, be safe out there. With love from the Philippines. We'd like to thank this lady for sharing her story. She didn't lose any money, just a little bit of her time. But her and her sister were smart enough to recognize the signs that she was dealing with a scammer. If you'd like to share your encounter you had with a scammer, you can find us on Facebook under the page Scamming Scammers Action or drop us an email, scammingscammers at gmail.com. Give us a little time to verify and narrate your story into a video. You can stay anonymous. Thanks for listening, and until next time, stay safe.